moving around. Uh, it's the Friday after Thanksgiving, a lot's going on. We are extremely busy at Requalis Enterprises, which obviously incorporates so many different entities and things. Uh, I'm excited about what's coming, but it is definitely pressing. But I'm here for it all. What I wanna do is I wanna talk to you real quickly about something that is in one sense isolated in another sense just a constant reminder of where we're at i want to talk to you about a little eight-year-old girl named nicole amari hill nicole's mom Brittany hill reported her missing i think maybe a week or so ago and you know, that was a, you know, search for the baby and everything like that. Eventually, the baby's remains were found and the true story came out. It came out that Nicole's mom, Brittany Hill, Nicole's mom, Brittany Hill, uh, her lover, her female lover, Celeste Owens, had beat the baby to death by striking her in the head over and over and over again. And that Brittany was aware of the fact that her lover had killed her daughter and she participated in the cover-up. They hid, they put the baby in trash bags and dumped the body. When I first hear that, the first thing that comes to mind is the same response that almost everybody else has when they hear something that horrific and gain an understanding that the very ones who perpetuated the act of horror were the ones who were entrusted with ensuring that the baby was safe. Evil, horrible, dark, just some of the uh, descriptions and adjectives that come to mind when you first hear that story, but then my background starts to come out. And then I start to say, untreated trauma. Uh, people who haven't healed, procreating. Where's the father? The darkness of so many different things are perpetuated out. And what we have to do is be able to see beyond the superficial see beyond the surface see, on, on the surface it's just horrible and evil on the surface there'll be some that'll be t talking and blaming it on same-sex relationships and, and and all of those things but what most will not do is be willing to look in the into the depths of this act and that it is becoming increasingly common uh that black children aren't safe now don't 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 come right this isn't the time to talk about all the other children and yes children are being harmed by uh people and adults in other races what we have to do is we have to be able to work and fix our issues and deal with our issues in a vacuum because no other group is going to come in and sit alongside us and work out our issues along with us. And so we can't start to view their issues as a part of our issues because then there's this natural expectation that they're going to help us solve it because we're all in the same boat. We're not in the same boat. Their issues don't impact them the same way. Because we are already traumatized on a, on a collective level, how we perceive and see things impacts us emotionally, spiritually, and psychologically in a different way than it does them. They're horrified by it. They're uh, totally blown back and they see it as being atrocious. But at the end of the day, they're seeing it from a less uh, severe plateau than we are. We are operating and viewing things through the paradigm of trauma. And because we are viewing things from the paradigm of trauma, 
we are easily traumatized and emotionally impacted. That's why we're so easily triggered by so many different things. Again, also that's why we're so easily manipulated by those triggers because people know exactly what to say and what to put in front of us to get us triggered and, and, and to get an emotional response. And they're also aware of the fact that in those emotional responses, they are able to dictate behavior by how they sit up and present it to us. We are going to have to deal with these issues. Yes, that was a horrific and evil act, but it didn't come in a vacuum. It came through the channel of untreated trauma, the channel of uh, a sense of abandon abandonment, a channel of a sense of abuse and at whatever levels you never know but I can tell you that a healed mind a healed heart a healed spirit doesn't do that so then we must say okay well what's going on we must be willing to understand that we can't simply put something aside or set it to the side and pretend it didn't happen and say we're healed that's not healing that's escapism that is uh uh a sense of denial it is everything except healing healing is confronting something head-on acknowledging that it exists and determining the best route of recovery the best route of restoring the best route of becoming whole again because something has been taken has been extracted from us and the problem now is that our children are suffering because of it our children are the ones who are becoming the the target of this vitriol, this anger, this unbridled hatred that we have for ourselves because of what we've been through. And now it's being aimed at our progeny, our offspring, those who should be able to depend upon us for safety and security. We've got a lot of work to do. And my challenge is that we really and truly get to it. I'm going to be doing some chapter readings. Uh, from some of my books just to address some of these issues so we can have some discussions. Uh, the first one is going to be tomorrow. Um, the next one is going to be Sunday. And then we'll see where we go from there. But what I'm going to do is do that. We've got work to do. We can sit up and talk all day. I've been challenging you guys for years, for at least 15 years on social media. I've been, I've been challenging you guys since about, well, not 15, maybe 12, 12 years on social media, 12, 13 years on social media, seriously. Uh, you know, it's been longer than that if you want to call MySpace and all that other stuff. But if you're talking uh, Facebook and on, you know, probably since, you know, then. But look, here, check this out. We've got to do the work. We've got to put in the work. We've got to be actively engaged on a collective level. I mean, even though what, what, what's frightening to me is the ones, those of us who have a handle on things are only concerned about the handle being on things in our, in our direct periphery, in our home. We've got our kids covered, but we are not concerned about the community. We're acting in this mindset of this concept of individualism at a level that's frightening. Individualism will destroy us. We're going to have to move into a, a, a mindset of collectivism if we're ever going to truly overcome this current state of existence that we're operating in. And it's so important that we do that. So I'm going to literally get out of here and I'm going to leave you with this. And hopefully um, we'll, we'll get to a point to where we are doing better. Uh, love and and prayers go out to all the loved ones and family members who are impacted by these types of tragedies, especially uh, the family and the friends of Nicole Amari Hill, rest easy little princess. Um, finally, don't forget to show love and support for the work we do here at the Odyssey Project on this level and so many others. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in. I will not be before you long, but what I do need to reinforce and reiterate with uh, great uh, specificity is the fact that if we ever needed your support here at the Odyssey Project, we need it now. Uh, there are so many different 
battles going on on so many different fronts. But one of the things that I'm immensely pa passionate about and can uh, never successfully overlook or sidestep around is the failure uh, of protecting and covering our children, preparing our children, educating our children, giving our children a fighting chance in this world. There are constant headlines of our children dying. Uh, at the hands of those who are supposed to protect them, at the hands of law enforcement, or becoming incarcerated uh, because of a failure to be prepared, and so many other things that we are going to have to be responsible for. We can no longer be uh, satisfied with sitting idly by and going, oh my God, shaking my head, that's sad, that's a shame. We're going to have to become actively involved in being a part of the change, being a part of empowering our youth. So at this moment, I am calling out and I'm asking you uh, to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. You will always be able to find a way to do so by looking in the description box at the top of the description box of any video on the Black Voice channel and any other platform where you see videos concerning black issues. You will see how you can support us by either clicking a link or giving directly through the organization's Cash App account. Again, this is a time in which we really need to step forward. So again, I'm asking, step forth and show some love and show some support.